Hey guys, what's going on? Coming to you this morning, another what's next. This is on IBF Cruiserweight Champion and my number one cruiserweight in the world right now, that's 200 pounds, Unier Dorticos. Um, Dorticos is coming out, he hasn't fought since June of last year when he scored a brutal 10th round knockout win over Andrew Tabidi in the semifinals of the World Boxing Super Series. Uh, as he captured the vacant IBF cruiserweight title with that win. He punched the ticket to the finals, but he had to wait around for, for the final, which he's still waiting for. But uh, that that was mainly because at first, because of um, the controversy over the other uh, semifinal that, uh, you know, uh, Bra Maris Bradis beat Christoph Glowacki by a controversial third round TKO. A lot of controversy in that fight, so... Uh, you know, they ended up having to uh, change a few things to get that fight going. So, um, so now uh, the fight is um, is on for the finals. But the problem is, is um, we have to wait around through the coronavirus. It's already been scheduled twice. It was scheduled for March 21st. Um, that was one of the first two cards to get canceled, like first two weekends. And that was when the, the pandemic and the cancellation came down hardcore. So um, then they rescheduled for May 16th. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm battling, battling allergies here. Um, they rescheduled for May 16th, but again, it got postponed. So eventually these guys are going to compete in the finals. It's going to be over a year since the semifinals. So a uh, little disappointing that we have to wait that long, but... It is what it is, but Dortico should be facing Bradis in the finals. I think he's going to knock him out and retain the IBF title. So the question is, what's next for Unier Dortico's after the World Boxing Super Series finals? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, one, is he even going to stay at Cruiserweight? That's a big thing. I've never heard anything, excuse me, anything about Dortico struggling to make weight. Um, but the thing is, he's got a heavyweight punch and... The heavyweight division is better now than it's been in a very long time so it's wide open so does he want to join that or does he want to just dominate and take over cruiserweight completely um i think either one is an option he might have an ibf mandatory title fight due um there's no mandatory challenger right now but it looks like that ibf might be loading up to set up an eliminator while he's competing in the final so that happens is he going to be willing to wait around? See, that, so that's the question. Um, so let's run through the top ten and see what options are possibly there for Uni or Dorticos next. We start with um, number one in the division right now is Dorticos. Number two is a rematch with Maris Braid. It would be a rematch at that point because they're fighting in the finals next. So, um, do I think these two guys can fight again? Um, yeah, why not? You know, um, if the fight's close. And uh, Dortico's barely gets by Bradis. I think a rematch is possible as long as Dortico's doesn't have to make a make a mandatory um, uh, a mandatory defense of the title. And um, if Bradis were to upset Dortico's, I think it'd be possible as long as uh, uh, Bradis didn't have to make a mandatory defense of the title. So, yeah, either way, the uh, a mandatory is definitely possible here. But um, but I'm going to lean towards the less likely because I really think Dorticos is going to knock Bradis out. You know, wear him down and knock him out to where Bradis won't want a mandatory. So I'm going to lean towards the no. Next is a showdown with number three, um, Christoph Gawachki, who's a former two-time Cruiserweight champ right now. And by the time this could be an option, I think he's going to be the, once again, WBO Cruiserweight champion. So, um... Do I think there's a possibility of these two guys? Yeah, you know, the, uh, Glowatsky, I feel, um, I'm not sure if he would have beat Bradis or not in the uh, semifinal, but I definitely feel he got a raw deal in terms of, you know, not being, you know, I, I really think that night, that, that fight with uh, with uh, Bradis, um, we didn't get to see, you know, the full Glowatsky and what he was made of. So um, I think if he becomes a WBO champion, he's probably the best, the best option for Dorticos to face if he was going to attempt to unify belts. He'd probably be the highest and, and the most, you know, I really think um, in terms of a slugfest between the two, it's probably the biggest fight to make and 
and maybe the the most you know the most beatable guy in terms of leaving himself wide open. Don't get me wrong, Glowachki's good, but he does leave himself open, you know. And a guy like uh, Dordico's might uh, you know might love a fight like that. So if it's a title unification, or even if he has a mandatory dude Dordico's and he doesn't want to make that mandatory and he wants to go after another world title. Excuse me. I think Lowachki is definitely possible. I think it's something he'd definitely look at. Number five, or I'm sorry, number four is WBC champion Ilunga Makabu. Another guy, I think very possible. As long as he doesn't have a mandatory defense due, I think it's a fight that uh, that Dordicos would look at, you know, because uh, Dordicos coming off, um, you know, coming off the World Box Super Series win. If he, if he doesn't have to make a mandatory defense, of the you know uh, of the title he could look to unify belts against Macaboo or if he did have to make a mandatory defense and he didn't want to and he vacates you know he's going after another world title against Macaboo and I think honestly I think it's a good slugfest right here I think it definitely would sell and it's a good slugfest so why not uh, take this fight so yeah definitely a possibility number five Noel Gabor contender I don't see this one Gabor's a good fighter but um, he hasn't done anything to earn a fight like this and I don't think um, he, he's he's not a big enough name I don't think Dordicos would fight him um, number six is um, Michael C. S. Uh former world title challenger another one um, you know would it be would it completely rule it out I think it's an interesting fight but um, but I doubt it you know C. S. Lock just he, he's not in line to become a mandatory and he, he's not a big name he hasn't really done much so I don't I don't see it number seven Russian contender Alexei Papin, another one not in line for anything for any mandatories. Um, you know, a mandatory in the IBF, he's not really in that mix right there. And um, I don't think uh, he's a big enough name for Dordicos to look at, so not seeing it. Number eight is a rematch with Andrew Tabidi. No point, Tabidi hasn't done anything since being knocked out, and I don't think Tabidi wants anything to do with Dordicos, so I'm not seeing it. And then number nine, Kevin Lorena. Now, this one's interesting. I think this fight's possible. Um, because Lorena, I think possibly this year, if he grows some balls finally, and yes, if Kevin Lorena or any of his people ever hear this, he needs to grow some balls. If he decides to get in the ring um, and with Ruslan Pfeiffer for the IBS mandatory number one shot, this could be Dordico's next fight. Um, you know, after the World Box Super Series final, if Dordico's decides to hold on to the title, I think he might fight Lorena. Because Lorena is a solid name, you know, from South Africa. He's decent, good prospect, you know, and um, he's a, a solid cruiserweight. And I think Dordicos may just fight him to hold on to his IBF title uh, next. So definitely think this fight could be possible. I'm going to lean towards the less likely because, to be honest, I don't think Lorena's got any balls to face anybody in the top 10 right now. I'm saying it. I'm calling it. I think he's playing it safe completely. But he could prove me wrong and take somebody on. And finally, at number 10 is undefeated Arsene Goulamarian. He's a WBA super champion. Because he holds another world title, I think it's possible, but I'm gonna lean towards the less likely. He's kind of an unknown. He's undefeated, he's got the title, but does Dordico wanna roll the dice on a guy, you know, we don't really know about in his next fight? I don't, and, he, and he doesn't have a big name? I'm not seeing it. So what do I think Dordico's is gonna do next? I honestly have no clue. I think um, it, it's kind of wide open. I think he could move up to heavyweight. I think there's a very good possibility of that. Um, but I also think maybe he tries to unify belts, like maybe a couple belts at cruiserweight, and uh, and you know spend another year here before he moves up to uh, to it. Or you know who knows? Who knows? The, the World Boxing Super Series might want to run the cruiserweights back again for a third straight season um, to do you know a tournament. So you never know. So it's kind of up in the air. Um, I really don't know. I think it's 50 50 stays at cruiserweight or goes to heavyweight. And um, it really, not, nothing rock solid. But I think he'll beat Bradis in the finals of the World Boxing Super Series and declare himself the undisputed number one cruiserweight in the world. So that's it. Hope you enjoy this. Oh, another option would be why not invite up Sergey Kovalev from light heavyweight who's talking about uh, coming up to cruiserweight anyway? It'd be a big fight. Kovalev might just go for it, you know? Um, all right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.